All right, there is a great story out of the Wall Street Journal today. Uh, this is in the op-ed section, uh, and it's called Scenes from Class Struggle in Lockdown, and it's brilliant. And the first piece that I have read where I think somebody really truly gets it, listen to this. I think there's a growing sense that we have to find a way to live with this thing, manage the best we can, muddle through. COVID-19 is not going away anytime soon. Summer may give us a break, late fall, probably not. Vaccines are likely far off, new therapies and treatments might help, but keeping things closed up tight until there are enough tests is not a viable plan. In the meantime, we have to ease up and manage we should go forward with a new national commitment to masks, social distancing, hand washing, these simple things that have proved most valuable tools in the tool chest. We have to enter each day armored up. But at the same time, we can't allow alertness to become exhaustion. We can't let an appropriate sense of caution turn into a, a, an anxiety formation. We can't become a nation of... Uh, uh, um, uh, agoraphobic, uh, agoraphobics. <laughs> we can't. We just can't be afraid of being outside. We have to live carefully. There's a class element in the public debate. It's been there the whole time, but it's getting worse. A few people in public life are acting as if they're sensitive to it. Our news professionals in the past three months have made plenty of room for medical professionals and warnings of the illness. Good. We need it. That was news. They're now not paying attention to, to an equal degree of sympathetic attention to the living, those who are living the economic story, such as the Dallas woman who pushed back, opened her air salon, was thrown in jail. There is a class divide between those who are hardline on lockdowns and those who are pushing back. The normal people aren't connected through professional or social lines to power structures. And they have regular jobs, service workers, small business owners. And since the pandemic began, the overclass has been in charge. Scientists, doctors, political figures, consultants calling the shots for the average person. But personally, they have less skin in the game. The National Institutes of Health scientists, they're not going to lose their livelihood over what's happened. Neither will the midday anchor. It's not that those in red states don't think that there's a pandemic. They've heard all about it. They realize that it is real and it will continue. They know they might get sick themselves, but they also figure it this way. Hundreds of thousands could die in the American economy taken down, which would mean millions of other casualties, economic ones, or hundreds of thousands that could die if the American economy is damaged beyond repair. There's foreclosures. There's unemployment. They'll take the latter. It's a loss either way. But one loss is worse than the other. They know the politicians and the scientists can't really weigh this on a scale with any precision because life is a messy thing and doesn't want to be quantified. The article goes on to say, here's a generalization based on a lifetime experience and observation. Working class people who are pushing back have had harder lives than those now determining their fate. They haven't had familial or economic ease. No one sent them to Yale. They often come from considerable family dysfunction. This has left them tougher or harder. You choose the word. They're, they're more fatalistic about life because life has taught them to be fatalistic. They look at those scientists and reporters making their warnings about how tough it's going to be. But if we should lift, uh, lift uh, shutdowns, it'll even be tougher. And they think... Oh, what informed, caring observers. Or not. Rather, they think, you have no idea what tough is. You have no idea what painful is. Why do you have so much to say? The overclass says, wait three months before we're safe. Their reply is, there's no such thing as safe. Something else is true about those who are pushing back. They live life closer to the ground and pick up other damage. Everyone knows the societal costs in abstract domestic violence, child abuse. But these people understand it as concrete. A lot of bad things happen behind America's closed doors. And the pandemic has made those doors thicker. 
Meanwhile, some of the governors are playing into every stereotype of the overclass. On Tuesday, Pennsylvania's Tom Wolf said in a press briefing that those pushing against the shutdown are cowards. Local officials who cave into this coronavirus will pay a price in the state funding. These folks are choosing to desert the, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, their cause in the face of the enemy in the middle of a war. He said he'll put state certificates such as liquor license for any businesses that open. He'll, he'll pull them. He must, have, he must have liked sounding uncompromising like General George Patton. But he wasn't like General George Patton. No sympathy, no respect, only judgment. That part of Patton he had. Michigan Governor Whitmer called anti-lockdown demonstrations racist and misogynistic. She called the entire movement political. It was, perhaps, in part. But the clamor in her state is real and serious. People are in economic distress and worry that the foundations of their lives are being swept away. She might as well just called them deplorables. She said this protest will only make the lockdowns last longer. Was that a threat or irony? Here's the thing. I think this is absolutely right. I listen to these elites, and I've given a pass that most people don't to Fauci, because Fauci's job is to just focus on health. Somebody else's job is to then say, thank you, Dr. Fauci, Mr. President, what he said, that's fine, but we cannot last because of the economic impact, because of this, because of that. So I give it to Fauci, but I don't give it to the press. And let me tell you this, all of these people who had lost their jobs, if Donald Trump would have been the one giving the lockdown orders, if he would have listened to the left and the press and become a dictator and said, no, no one is opening up until this date. All of these stories of these businesses that are closing, all of these stories of the guy who started his music store back in, you know, 1975, and it's been his dream, and he wasn't rich, but he was happy, and now he had to close it, and the state came after him because he tried to open it up, and now he's lost everything. I guarantee you all of those stories would have been wall-to-wall on cable news, would have been wall-to-wall on the front page of the New York Times, But because it's the left that is doing this, they pay no attention to it. That's the sad thing about our country. And another thing that the press misses. Nobody wants other people to die. But reason, the reason why America is so on edge right now is not just the lockdown. I believe Americans are happy warriors. We do it if you suggest it to us. If you, if, you, if you force us into something, we don't want to do it. But if, we, if you just give us the information and let us decide for ourselves, we'll do it. As evidenced in, in Stu's show last week, he did a, a whole show on just the stats on how Americans went into lockdown long before the state or the government said you should go into lockdown. We knew. We watched TV. We started to self-quarantine automatically. Now we've seen the results, and if you're in New York City, you're not running out to a restaurant, even if they opened them today. You wouldn't be running out to a restaurant in a crowded movie theater. Here in Texas, it's not anything like it was in, in New York. You're still not running out to a crowded place. We wouldn't do it. Why? Because we're thinking human beings. We're not sheep. I want to hear from people today. I want to hear from you. 888-727-BECK. I want to hear from the people who have lost their business or the people who have said, my business is actually doing better. Or here's a surprise. I actually like the lockdown. And here's why. 
or people who are struggling in one way or another and you don't feel your voice is being heard. Those who feel absolutely alone. People who feel like nobody is saying this, and to me it's so obvious. Today is your chance to say it, and I want to hear it. 888-900-3393. 